Hello again! I'm here to review Lakota Woman by Mary Crowdog and Richard Erdoes. Um, this Mary Crowdog was one of the foremost leaders of the Native American Civil Rights Movement, which gained a lot of traction in the 1970s. Uh, she is the was the wife of uh, Leonard Crowdog, who was another one of the leaders of the American Indian Movement. Uh, so um, she wrote it with Richard Erdoes, who was a lawyer who she got to know uh, while uh, her husband was in prison. Um, Richard Erdoes kind of helped fight for let her husband to get out of prison. But um, so this book basically is is a memoir of her life up to the point where she wrote the book. Uh, she wrote it when she was 37, um, and it opens in 1954 when she was born on the Rosebud Reservation uh, of the Lakota, she was Lakota Sioux, um, born in South Dakota in the Rosebud Reservation to a Christian mother, a father who she never knew, he kind of walked out very early on. Um, her grandmother was more traditional Native American and had a lot of influence on her, so she kind of had a lot of tension between her mom, who was this Christian, who was this devout Christian who like wanted her to you know, be as white as possible because she thought that that's how her daughter would be successful and her grandmother who tried to show her traditional Native American ways. Um, and so um, it talks about her early life, her being sent to boarding school, a boarding school run by nuns and priests um, who were all, of course, white, uh, and her experiences there. Um, when she's 15 or so, she manages to just kind of, they just kind of, they don't kick her out, but basically she's such a delinquent at the school that finally she's just like, okay, clearly I'm not getting anywhere, just let me go, and they just were like, okay, yeah. So she gets out of school, she kind of falls into a life of uh, delinquency and drug and alcohol abuse uh, before finding the American Indian Movement, which is ab abbreviated throughout the book as AIM. Um, which was the main uh, Native American civil rights movement. And um, basically that, her experience in the AIM, in AIM is the bulk of this memoir. Uh, so uh, culminating in two major events, the first of which was uh, when, the, when AIM tried to march on Washington, uh, much like Martin Luther King Jr. Um, did for black civil rights. Um, and then their occupation of Wounded Knee, the site of Wounded Knee. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Wounded Knee is a site in South Dakota where a huge massacre of uh, Native Americans took place. Uh, the U.S. Army killed like 300 or more, uh, mostly women and children. Um, and then all the women and children were just kind of thrown into a mass grave and buried there. And that was in 1890, and it's kind of considered the end of... Native American resistance to uh, American conquest of their lands. Um, so the, I mean, the primary theme here is racism against Native Americans. Um, you know, throughout the book, we see so many examples, and this is a this is a subject area where. I was pathetically ignorant, and I suspect many white Americans are pathetically ignorant of uh, racism against Native Americans in the mo in modern times. Um, it's in the 1970s, but it's roughly modern. Um, because, you know, in our United States curriculum, basically we're taught about Native Americans up to the massacre of Wounded Knee, which was in 1890. And after that, basically, if you were to believe American school curriculums, you would think that Native Americans just kind of fell off the side of the world uh, because they don't talk about them again after that. Um, we learn about the black civil rights movement, but we never learn about the Native American civil rights movement um, and what Native Americans experienced. So <clears throat> this was very educational in this way. You know, just look, and in some ways it's pretty similar to racism against blacks you know, there were restaurants and stores that would have signs up that just said, no Indians allowed. Uh, they, uh, there would be stabbings and shootings of Native Americans by white people. And just like when there's a stabbing or shooting of a black person nowadays, there was, you know, the white person was almost never convicted or was, you know, convicted of a, 
of some really light sentence like manslaughter instead of murder. Um, the you know her experiences at the boarding school, uh, where none of the kids were allowed to speak their native language. They were degraded for any for their poor English because a lot of them were raised speaking their native language. Um, the the discipline tactics are. I mean, completely abusive. Mary Crowdot talks about her grandma who went to the same boarding school as her. And for, she was found playing a game in church instead of praying. And just for that, she was locked in a dark room for an entire week with no contact with the outside world except for just bringing her food. And then after she got out from that week, she tried to run away. And then for she was caught and for running away, she was locked in that room for two weeks. So, and I mean, these kids are beaten with sticks. They're, I mean, they're yelled at, they're verbally abused. Um, and some of them are sexually assaulted, uh, you know, so it's just awful. And Ma Mary Crow Dog's kind of um, involvement in Native American rights kind of starts there. She actually starts this like underground newspaper at the at the boarding school which she, she calls the red panther after the black panthers which is kind of cool but eventually of course it's discovered and she's not allowed to do it anymore um but she escapes from there and um you know i i was i feel like there's something similar with what malcolm x talked about in his autobiography about how so many blacks fell into a life of crime because of the fact that so many careers were closed to them. And that's definitely also true in this book. I mean, she spent, Mary Crodock herself spends a time basically just roaming around in bad cars with friends and just stealing, stealing food, stealing the things she needs to survive. And that's just because there are so many places where Native Americans weren't allowed. You know, she talks about South Dakota in particular as such a racist place against Native Americans. Um, so it's just this, you know, you can see this kind of same cycle of careers to like pull up out of the, out of their situation are just closed to them and they fall into a life of crime and um, they might go to prison then. And then of course they're not doing anything to help themselves in prison. Um, but anyway, um, you also, I also get the sense that the American Indian movement, which she joins after a while of, uh, being a delinquent, um, I got the sense that Native Americans had to do a lot more than the black civil rights movement to get attention. Um, you know, they, they, when they do their March on Washington, the American Indian movement, you know, they're not even allowed near the White House. Uh, you know, they basically, they have to keep going to more and more extremes to get attention until finally they decide to just storm the building for the Bureau of Indian Affairs and just basically occupy it. And they just, they just go around finding like any weapons they can when the, when the uh, police come and kind of besiege them there. Um, and even when they get the government's attention finally, uh, the government doesn't address their concerns. You know, they, they say they will, and then they, of course, don't. So, and that happens with their, uh, the when the American Indian Movement occupies Wounded Knee, the site of Wounded Knee, they also, you know, they were besieged by the police, and when finally they were told that we will consider your demands, nothing was done. Um, so, and that makes the end, that makes it kind of sad because you know, you get the sense that these people did so much to try to get right their rights and they didn't end up, you know, they didn't end up getting much out of their efforts because the American government just refused to do anything. Um, which, you know, is shameful. Um, but there is, um, there is a bit of a bright side because a lot. Another thing that this book explores is Mary Crowdog's involvement with the revival of traditional Native American religious practices. So um, when they occupy Wounded Knee, they uh, bring back the Ghost Dance, which is this dance 
from the 1800s, which was um, became popular among Native Americans when they were really getting desperate in the fight against the United States and um, was supposed to like, make, they were supposed to wear these vests and, you know, that could like block bullets and stuff. And um, that's not really why um, they do, well, that's not why the American Indian movement does the ghost dance. They do it as, you know, a religious practice and, and as a symbolic act. Um, and also uh, other things like the sun dance, which is sort of this, it's it's a, I mean, it, she goes through the elaborate descriptions, but um, it's many things like uh, they would pierce themselves to kind of, as sort of a symbolic, like they they would do they would do it as a sort of a sacrifice for someone else or something like someone Mary Crodog's son wanted to um pierce his chest in order to kind of do it for Native Americans who were in prison so you you suffer for those other people um in a way um and she talks about kind of their use of like different uh sort of drugs like like she doesn't use the name but probably marijuana and uh, sh mushrooms and things like that so that's interesting and it's nice to see their traditional religion being revived um but it is it's bittersweet at the backdrop of you know how little they managed to achieve in terms of civil rights um so yeah this book was a really good introduction to the Native American Civil Rights Movement, which in American schools we learn nothing about. Uh, we literally learn nothing. I did not even know there was a Native American Civil Rights Movement. I literally didn't know there was a Native American Civil Rights Movement until very recently. Um, it, this book wasn't the one that brought that to my attention. It was actually a novel by Sherman Alexie that um, brought to my attention that there was a Native American Civil Rights Movement. but. You know, I just, I think this is an important book. I think everyone should read it just to get a, a taste of what they went, the, these Native Americans went through to try to get their rights. <sighs> yeah. So, highly recommend it again. Um, that is what I have. So, thank you all. Bye.